the planet Earth is not only hollow, holes are actually thin and there are actually entrances into the inner core at the north and south poles of the Earth. Deep within the icy depths of Antarctica, where silence reigns and secrets lie dormant, a discovery has emerged, sending shockwaves through the scientific community and striking fear into the hearts of people around the globe. For centuries, Antarctica has remained an enigma, a desolate wilderness untouched by human hands. But now, a group of intrepid researchers has stumbled upon an anomaly that defies all understanding, a revelation that could reshape the course of history itself. Join us as we embark on an epic journey to unravel the secrets that lay hidden beneath the expanse of ice in Antarctica. What just emerged in Antarctica has instilled bone-chilling terror in the whole world, and it could possibly be the ultimate battle between mankind and forces that are beyond our comprehension. Polar Exploration In the vast expanse of history, only a select few intrepid adventurers have managed to earn the revered title of heroes. Yet it's important to note that not all of these explorers receive the recognition they deserve or have their remarkable discoveries duly acknowledged. Surprisingly, some of these courageous individuals had their findings deliberately concealed by those in power. One such explorer, who had an extraordinary tale to tell, was Rear Admiral Richard Evelyn Byrd. The name Rear Admiral Richard Evelyn Byrd doesn't immediately ring a bell, but his recent revelations have cast doubt on everything we thought we knew about our planet. Evelyn Byrd was a distinguished naval commander and explorer hailing from the United States. He was not only an exceptional aviator, but also a trailblazing pioneer in polar exploration and an ingenious organizer of polar logistics. His extraordinary feats were rightly acknowledged with the Medal of Honor, the highest accolade for bravery bestowed by the United States. His remarkable Arctic career took flight in 1924, when he assumed leadership of a small naval aviation unit as part of Commander D.B. McMillan's Arctic expedition to Western Greenland. This marked the beginning of Byrd's awe-inspiring journey into the frigid realms of the North. However, what sets Byrd's story apart is the astonishing discovery he made during his explorations, a discovery that challenged the very foundations of our understanding of the planet. Unfortunately, these groundbreaking findings were met with resistance and suppression from the authorities of the time. Imagine the intrigue and mystery surrounding Byrd's concealed revelations. What could he have stumbled upon that was so profound and controversial? Did his findings contradict existing scientific knowledge or challenge established narratives? These questions hang tantalizingly in the air, waiting to be unraveled. Bird's fascination with flying over icy landscapes began when he soared above the shimmering sea ice and majestic glaciers of western Greenland. It was there that he first caught wind of an intriguing rumor, a secret entrance to the mysterious center of the Earth concealed somewhere within the icy depths of the South Pole. Intrigued by this fantastical notion, he embarked on daring expeditions, piloting his planes toward the uncharted lands of the South Pole. But fate had a different plan for him. During one of his treacherous flights over the Pole, something extraordinary happened. It was on May 9, 1926, that Byrd and his skillful pilot, Floyd Bennett, claimed to have accomplished a remarkable feat. They declared themselves the first aviators to successfully fly over the icy expanse of the North Pole. Their epic adventure began in Kings Bay, Pittsburgh, and Norway, where they took off in their trusty Fokker tri-motor aircraft. For a staggering 15 and a half hours, Byrd and Bennett navigated the frigid skies, encountering only minor obstacles, such as an oil leak in the starboard engine. Despite this hiccup, they pressed on, driven by their unwavering determination and the thrill of exploration. News of their triumphant achievement spread like wildfire, and the nation erupted in celebration. Byrd and Bennett were hailed as national heroes, their bravery and audacity capturing the imagination of people far and wide. Their unwavering spirit and the perseverance they demonstrated during their historic flight earned them the prestigious Congressional Medal of Honor, a testament to their extraordinary accomplishment. Yet even in the face of overwhelming acclaim, controversy lingered in the air. Doubts arose regarding whether Byrd and Bennett's aircraft had truly reached the elusive North Pole. 
Some skeptics questioned the accuracy of their navigation and the veracity of their claims. Mount Sidley. Unlike the early explorers who relied on traditional means, Byrd used airplanes and other modern tools to navigate through the treacherous terrain. During one of his expeditions, he stumbled upon something truly awe-inspiring, a gigantic slumbering volcano called Mount Sidley. This massive volcano is not only the largest of its kind in Antarctica, but also holds a special place among the famous seven summits of volcanic peaks around the world. Its remote location, far away from human civilization, adds an extra layer of allure, attracting adventurous mountaineers who yearn for extraordinary experiences. He led multiple Antarctic expeditions, each one filled with remarkable achievements. His first voyage, which spanned from 1928 to 1930, marked the beginning of his exploration saga. During this trip, he established a base known as Little America on the frozen surface of the Ross Ice Shelf. From there, Byrd and his team embarked on thrilling flights over the vast expanse of Antarctica, charting new territories and discovering hidden mountain ranges. Not one to rest on his laurels, Byrd embarked on a second mission from 1933 to 1935. During this daring adventure, he constructed a second base called Little America II and, unbelievably, spent five long winter months alone at an advanced base located 123 miles away from the main camp. This solitude and isolation were a true test of Byrd's resilience and determination. His thirst for exploration led him on a third voyage from 1939 to 1941, aptly named Little America III. It was during this journey that he stumbled upon Western Island, a remarkable discovery that added to his list of significant findings. Byrd's insatiable curiosity and drive to unravel the secrets of the icy continent were unwavering. However, his most ambitious and largest Antarctic expedition was his fourth trip, known as Little America IV, or Operation High Jump. It took place from 1946 to 1947 and involved an astounding fleet of 13 ships and a staggering 4,000 personnel. This mammoth undertaking earned its title as the most extensive Antarctic expedition to date, demonstrating Byrd's unparalleled commitment to unraveling the mysteries of the icy continent. Operation Deep Freeze in 1955 to 1956, Byrd embarked on his final adventure to Antarctica, known as Little America Fiev. It was an extraordinary expedition that took place during the International Geophysical Year and was given the codename Operation Deep Freeze. Throughout his missions, Byrd made remarkable discoveries and greatly expanded our knowledge of Antarctica. But here's where it gets truly fascinating. Some of Byrd's most captivating findings remained a secret for many years, until his son stumbled upon his long-lost diary. It turned out that the diary had somehow ended up in the possession of Tawani Wakawa Shush. This remarkable discovery paved the way for the formation of the International Society for a Complete Earth, which we now know as the Hollow Earth Research Society. The diary contained incredible revelations that challenged conventional wisdom, its contents remained unknown until the 1970s when they finally came to light. To ensure the diary's significance reached a wider audience, it was passed on to Dan Weiss, a renowned researcher and author specializing in UFOs. Upon its publication, the world was introduced to Byrd's hidden discoveries, providing a tantalizing glimpse into a realm of possibilities. The revelations within the diary sparked widespread curiosity and ignited passionate debates. The extraordinary insights found within the diary's pages pushed the boundaries of scientific exploration and inspired further investigation into the mysteries of the Hollow Earth. Mysterious Voyage The missing diary of Admiral Richard E. Byrd is like a hidden treasure filled with extraordinary tales. It reveals a captivating story about a mysterious voyage that he embarked upon over the North Pole on February 9, 1947. At that time, Admiral Byrd was leading Task Force 68, stationed at the planet's southernmost point. They were part of an ambitious mission called Operation High Jump, a six-month adventure to explore the vast icy landscapes of Antarctica. This expedition was no ordinary affair. Task Force 68 set sail from Norfolk, Virginia on December 2, 1946, prepared for an epic journey filled with exploration and discovery. 
However, something unexpected happened during this grand expedition. After roughly two months of mapping and photographing the breathtaking coastlines and hidden interiors of Antarctica, the mission abruptly came to an end. The reasons behind this sudden conclusion remained shrouded in mystery. It is precisely at this perplexing juncture that the missing diary comes into play. Its existence raises numerous questions. How did the International Scientific Council come into possession of this enigmatic journal? Why would Admiral Byrd venture over the North Pole while leading a high-profile Antarctic expedition? One can only speculate about the hidden motives and extraordinary circumstances that led Admiral Byrd to take flight across the icy expanse of the North Pole. Perhaps there were unknown phenomena or uncharted territories that beckoned him, captivating his curiosity and driving him to explore beyond the boundaries of his assigned mission. In an intriguing journal titled Flight Log, Base Camp Arctic, Byrd documented his extraordinary experiences during a mission to the Arctic. As he ventured north just a few hours into the journey, he stumbled upon a breathtaking range of mountains that he had never laid eyes on before. These towering peaks stood as a testament to the hidden wonders of the polar region. However, his expedition took an unexpected turn when he encountered difficulties with the magnetic and gyro compasses on board his aircraft. To his surprise, these essential navigation tools began to spin and sway unpredictably. The researchers accompanying him speculated that this erratic behavior might have been caused by the aircraft flying over the North Pole itself, as hinted by the reference to the base camp in the Arctic and their northerly heading. Just two weeks after Byrd's Arctic journey, Chilean newspapers reported a new and strange event involving him. They claimed that Byrd encountered a different enemy with amazing flying objects. These mysterious objects could travel long distances and move quickly between the poles. In the Weddell Sea, a dangerous battle took place for about 20 minutes. The unidentified craft emerged from the water and attacked Byrd's group, resulting in many injuries and deaths. In one entry in Byrd's diary, he mentioned an unexpected mission over Antarctica where he was transported into the inner Earth through a vortex. There, he met humanoid beings called Agarthans and a respected leader known as the Master. The Master scolded Byrd for humanity's creation of the atomic bomb and warned about its destructive power. This encounter left Byrd amazed, and he believed that humanity needed to change to avoid a bleak future. These strange events were considered very unusual and Byrd decided not to talk about them after being briefed at the Pentagon. The last entry in his diary hinted at a promise to keep these astonishing occurrences a secret. Newspaper accounts from March 5th corroborated the claims made by Byrd, as crew members of Task Force 68 shared their own testimonies with reporters. These brave individuals recounted clashes with extraordinary disc-shaped vehicles, leading to numerous casualties among their ranks. Rather than dismissing or downplaying the significance of these losses, he chose to inform the Chilean press about this formidable new adversary capable of traversing vast distances at incredible speeds, spanning from pole to pole. Unveiling the Hidden Realm of Agartha Bird wrote in his diary about an extraordinary flight he took. It was no ordinary journey as he found himself soaring through a mysterious mountain range. To his surprise, instead of icy and snowy landscapes, he stumbled upon a vibrant and lush area teeming with life. This incredible discovery occurred during his February expedition into the depths of the Earth. During his flight, Bird claims to have caught sight of a massive creature called a mammoth, an ancient and majestic beast that was thought to be long extinct. But that was just the beginning of his astonishing encounter. As he continued his flight, he felt a strange and irresistible pull towards an unknown city later revealed to be called Agartha. However, the flight was far from smooth. His navigation instruments started acting up, going completely haywire. The gyroscope, a device used to measure and maintain orientation, swung back and forth erratically, rendering the controls of the plane useless. It was a disorienting and unnerving experience for Bird and his crew. But then, something truly bewildering occurred. Disc-shaped aircraft, shining with a radiant glow and bearing swastikas, began to escort Bird's plane towards Agartha. These unknown flying machines seemed to protect and guide them to their destination. Upon landing, 
He and his radio men were greeted by a group of tall beings with blonde hair. They were instructed to disembark from the aircraft and were then escorted to a meeting with a figure known as the Master. It was here that Bird learned that he had entered the Arihani Domain, a hidden realm deep within the Earth's interior. In subsequent diary entries, he recalls his interactions and conversations with the inhabitants of Agartha. He discovered that his arrival in their domain was not a coincidence, but part of a greater plan. The beings informed him that his task would not be delayed for long, suggesting that he had an important role to play. According to Bird's accounts, the devastation caused by the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki led the Arahani to send their flugel rods, or flying discs, to the surface world. Their purpose was to investigate the impact of these destructive weapons on humanity's progress. It was a realization that shed light on the profound concerns and actions of the beings from Agartha. During the meeting with the Master, Bird cited the Master's statement as follows. You see, we have never interfered before in your race's wars and barbarity. But now we must intervene because you have learned to tamper with a certain power that is not meant for humans, specifically atomic energy. Our emissaries have already delivered messages to the powers of your world. However, they have not listened. You have been chosen to bear witness to the reality of how the world exists. Our culture and science are deeply intertwined. In 1945 and afterward, we attempted to make contact with your race, but our efforts were met with hostility. Our flugel rods were fired upon. Yes, your jet planes are pursuing us with venom and animosity. So, my son, I warn you that a great storm is brewing on your globe. A terrible fury that will last for many years. There will be no solution in your weapons, no security in your science. This storm may continue until every aspect of your civilization has been trampled, and all human achievements have been destroyed in immense chaos. Your recent conflict was merely a glimpse of what is to come for your race. The Master then instructed Bird to return to Earth with a message for humanity saying, The Dark Ages that will now befall your race will cover the Earth like a shroud. However, I believe that some of your kind will survive the storm. Beyond that, I cannot predict. We see a new world emerging from the ashes of your race, seeking its lost and mythical treasures. And they will find us, my son, safeguarded in our hands. When that time comes, we will step forward once again to help revive your culture and race. Perhaps by then, you will have realized the futility of war and struggle. After a certain period, certain aspects of your culture and knowledge will be restored, allowing your species to begin anew. He was guided back to meet his radio man, and together they were taken back to their plane. The plane was then directed out of the city and returned to their base camp. It seems to land about an hour or so later. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. In the frigid expanse of Antarctica, an astonishing sight jolted the world. A colossal alien robot, its metallic frame gleaming under the polar sun, emerged from the ice. The entire globe held its breath and theories of extraterrestrial life were abuzz. Scientists marveled at the intricate craftsmanship, pondering its origins and purpose. However, as investigations deepened, cracks in the facade began to appear. In a shocking twist, the giant robot was exposed as an elaborate hoax created by a group of eccentric artists. The world gasped in disbelief, yet fascination remained. Questions surfaced, demanding answers. Who were the masterminds behind the audacious ruse? How did they manage to deceive the world? What compelled them to orchestrate such an elaborate spectacle? As the truth unfolded, a tale of passion, ambition, and the insatiable thirst for captivating the human imagination emerged. The artists, driven by a desire to ignite wonder and provoke contemplation, had ingeniously fabricated an awe-inspiring enigma. Though debunked, the Antarctic robot remains an enduring symbol of humanity's yearning for the extraordinary and the profound mysteries that lie beyond our understanding. Let's know what you think about what we just showed you. Disc-Shaped Aircrafts Less than three weeks after this reported encounter with the Master, Operation High Jump, which was an important mission, was unexpectedly cancelled. Task Force 68, comprising a group of military personnel, found themselves stationed in Chilean ports. 
One of the crew members informed the media about a strange battle against disc-shaped objects that emerged from the sea after their Pentagon debriefing on March 11. However, all communication from the mission's leader, Byrd, was silenced after that point. No further updates were shared. During the same year, in July, there were numerous UFO sightings in residential areas across the United States. It was during this time that a disc-shaped object was rumored to have been recovered from a ranch near Roswell, New Mexico. Some have speculated that Operation High Jump was a response to a supposed Nazi colony called Neuschwabenland, believed to have been established by Adolf Hitler in Antarctica during World War II. There were even theories that Hitler himself may have escaped there. In the book Our Earth is Hollow by Rodney Clough, an author fascinated by the idea of a hollow earth, it is claimed that a renowned explorer named Byrd had an extraordinary journey in 1927. According to Clough, Byrd allegedly discovered entrances to the hollow earth at both the North and South Poles. He entered through the North Pole entrance and returned two years later by passing through the openings at both poles. Intriguingly, during Operation High Jump in 1946, which aimed to explore Antarctica, Byrd is said to have flown halfway into the South Polar opening before encountering a remarkable event. As the story goes, he apparently encountered a disc-shaped craft and even fired upon it. This encounter led some to speculate that Byrd's task force was redirected away from the continent as a result. Many questions arise from Byrd's supposed encounter. Why was he silenced and prevented from openly discussing his remarkable experience? If knowledge of this encounter had not been suppressed, how might it have shaped humanity's understanding of the world? Is it possible that the wave of UFO sightings during that period could be connected to this specific encounter? While the truth of Byrd's adventures remains uncertain, there have been numerous reports of UFO sightings in Antarctica. Prominent UFO hunters have documented these sightings, suggesting a mysterious presence on the icy continent. In fact, Scott Waring of ET Database claims to have made a fascinating discovery while virtually exploring Antarctica using Google Maps. He stumbled upon a photograph that appeared to show an object partially buried beneath the snow and ice. Upon closer examination, the object resembled an alien spacecraft with a metallic-like body, a triangular shape, and a noticeable hump in the middle. These findings fuel speculation about the possibility of aliens having been present on Earth for centuries, or even thousands of years. The notion that extraterrestrial beings may have visited our planet and left behind traces of their encounters is both captivating and thought-provoking. Hollow Earth There is a theory called the Hollow Earth Theory that suggests there are secret worlds beneath our feet. This idea has been around for a long time, even in ancient times. People in different cultures associated it with mythological places like the Greek Hades, the Nordic Zwartel, the Jewish Sheol, and the Christian Hell. It was the philosopher Plato who first proposed the concept of a hollow earth. But let's fast forward to 1692 when a scientist named Edmund Halley came up with his own version of the hollow earth model. He believed that our planet is like a thick shell with not just one, but two inner concentric shells and a core at the center. To determine the size of these inner shells, Halley looked at the diameters of other planets like Venus, Mars, and Mercury. Each of these inner shells, according to Halley, has its own atmosphere and magnetic pulse, and they rotate at different speeds. What motivated Halley to propose this theory were strange compass readings that didn't quite make sense. He thought that the Earth's unusual magnetic behavior could be explained by the existence of inner shells. But it doesn't stop there. Halley also believed that inside the Earth, within these inner shells, there could be an entire ecosystem of living creatures. He even speculated that the mesmerizing aurora borealis, the beautiful lights that sometimes appear in the sky, could be caused by gas escaping from within the Earth. Interestingly, other scholars like Leonard Euler took Halley's idea further. In their book, Lands Beyond, authors De Camp and Lay mentioned that Euler proposed a similar concept of a hollow Earth but with multiple shells instead of just two. What's even more fascinating is that Euler imagined an inner sun within the hollow earth, providing light for a highly advanced civilization thriving in the depths. However, it's worth noting that Euler also contemplated the idea of a solid earth. In his letters to a German prince, he described a thought experiment where the earth is solid. 
So even among these great thinkers, there were different ideas and speculations about the nature of our planet. In the early 19th century, Sir John Leslie expanded on Euler's idea and gave names to the inner suns, calling them Pluto and Proserpine. It's interesting to note that this was unrelated to the later discovery of the dwarf planet Pluto. In 1829, John Cleves Sims Jr. put forth his own vision of hollow Earth. He proposed that our planet had a hollow shell that was 800 miles thick, with openings at both poles and four inner shells. Each inner shell had an opening at the poles as well. Sims gained considerable popularity for his ideas thanks to his supporter James McBride. Sims even planned a trip to the North Pole to prove his theory, but it was canceled by U.S. President Andrew Jackson. Sadly, Sims passed away in the same year, 1829. Jeremiah Reynolds, another follower of the Hollow Earth theory, took up the cause after Sims' death. Reynolds gave lectures on the subject and called for an expedition to explore the Hollow Earth. However, he eventually shifted his focus and embarked on his own journey to Antarctica. Due to his previous controversies and insults toward others, Reynolds did not participate in the United States' great exploring journey of 1838 to 1842. In the 20th century, there were several proponents of the idea of a hollow Earth. William Reed, in 1906, wrote a book called Phantom of the Poles, where he suggested that the Earth is hollow without inner shells or inner suns. Marshall Gardner also supported the concept of a hollow Earth with his book A Journey to the Earth's Interior, in 1913, later expanded in 1920. Gardner proposed the idea of an inner sun and even made a model to explain his theory. However, he didn't mention Reed's ideas. Around the same time, Vladimir Obruchev wrote a fictional novel called Plutonia that depicted a hollow earth inhabited by prehistoric creatures and with a central sun. The book imagined a hole in the Arctic connecting the interior with the surface. Some people believe in ascended masters living in underground tunnels or a hollow earth. They think places like Antarctica, the North Pole, Tibet, Peru, and Mount Shasta in California are gateways to this hidden world called Agartha. Some even suggest that these areas are the origins of UFOs. In 1969, a book called The Hollow Earth emerged, supposedly written by Dr. Raymond Bernard. It delves into these concepts, exploring the idea of hollow planets, and even proposing that UFOs come from the Ring Nebula. Interestingly, the author's pseudonym, Bernard, was actually Walter Siegmeister, as revealed by Martin Gardner's essay. However, a more complete story about Bernard Siegmeister came to light in 1989 with Walter Captain Minkel's book, Subterranean World, 100,000 Years of Dragons, Dwarfs, the Dead, Lost Races, and UFOs from Inside the Earth. During the years 1945 to 1949, Ray Palmer, the editor of a science fiction magazine called Amazing Stories published a series of stories by Richard Sharp Shaver, known as the Shaver Mystery. Shaver claimed that an advanced prehistoric species constructed a network of underground caves. Their degenerate descendants, called the Darrow, allegedly still reside there, using the advanced technology left behind by ancient races to torment people on the surface. These tormenting voices, believed to be from inexplicable sources, were cited as evidence by Shaver and were supposedly heard by many individuals, adding to the intrigue surrounding the underground world. Instead of saying humans live on the outer surface of a hollow earth, some people suggest a different idea called the concave hollow earth theory. They believe there is a cosmos inside the hollow world, like a Dyson sphere. In 1869, a doctor named Cyrus T. Day from New York proposed a similar theory called Cellular Cosmogony. Based on this idea, he started a cult called Koroshanity, and their main colony still exists today in Florida. Day's followers claimed to prove the Earth's curvature by surveying the Florida shoreline using special technology. In the 20th century, German writers like Peter Bender, Johannes Langkamp, Neupert, and for its broad supported the hollow earth theory, adding more to the idea of a hidden world beneath us. There are stories, although not proven, that suggest Adolf Hitler was influenced by the concave hollow earth idea. According to these tales, Hitler sent an expedition to spy on the British Navy by pointing cameras into the sky. He believed the sky above was a spherical cavern filled with stars, hoping to gather important information by looking up. 
An Egyptian mathematician named Mustafa Abdelkad took this notion further and wrote scientific publications describing a precise mapping of this concave Earth model. He proposed that light beams would travel in circular paths, gradually slowing down as they approached the center of the cavern. However, in conventional scientific cosmology, it is believed that no energy can reach the center of this cavern, which is located at a finite distance away from Earth. Martin Gardner, a well-known writer, suggested that if a drill were to penetrate this cavern, it would seemingly extend endlessly until reaching a point at infinity, which corresponds to the center of the Earth. However, this theory is often dismissed based on Occam's razor principle, which encourages us to choose simpler explanations when multiple options are available. If you were inside the Earth, you wouldn't feel pulled towards the outer surface. According to gravity theory, you would feel almost weightless. This is because of Isaac Newton's idea that inside a hollow shell, the gravity force is zero. But on the inner surface, there would still be a small gravity force. This happens because the Earth isn't a perfect sphere and because of the Moon's gravity and the Earth's rotation. These factors would make you feel a bit pulled outward if you were inside the hollow Earth. If the hollow Earth had the same materials as the outside, it would weigh less. So, the gravity on the outer surface would be weaker than what we have now. These ideas about a hollow Earth are interesting but not widely accepted by scientists. They offer an imaginative perspective that combines historical anecdotes with scientific principles but their validity remains uncertain. Which of these terrifying discoveries in Antarctica did you find the most intriguing? Let us know your opinions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.